I was born and brought up in the small town Srikakulam in Andhra Pradesh. This is close to Vizag. Growing up, like every school kid, I had a favorite subject too. It was physics. But like every Indian school kid, I didn't get to pursue that because I had to do this chore of every Indian household, engineering. Yeah, you heard that, right? Engineering is not a four-year course. It's a four-year chore. You can read the last word in English or Hindi and not be wrong. So as this was uh, going, I realized that a uh, couple of semesters through, I realized engineering wasn't for me. I looked for ways to switch to physics. I didn't find any. One year after engineering, though, I realized that I seriously need to switch to physics. So someone suggested me an exam. I prepared for that. But one year of preparation later, I realized that this was the wrong exam I've been preparing for. By then, it was already two years, and I had to spend one more year doing nothing. Needless to say, I was very frustrated. Out of this frustration, I decided that, OK, there might be many more others who are in the same situation that did not happen to them. So I started writing it as Quora, and then uh, it became a blog, eventually a website. Uh, we call it Citizens of Science. And there was a WhatsApp group that started along with that. And one, two persons would join it every day. Amongst the early readers was this second year engineering student from uh, IIT PHU. His, he was on a hospital bed. He just met with an almost fatal accident, had some fractures and all. He wanted to switch to physics, so he Googled up and he found something and he joined us. This was all in 2018, by the way. By 2019, we had about uh, 250 members in our group. But you know, right, people say online group, they just join in because they found a link. They, all of them, they may not be very serious aspirants, or at least that was what I was thinking. Uh, but I was in for a surprise. Uh, in the year of 2019, out of the group of 250, 17 of these engineers switched to physics and made it to the IITs. Seven of them made it to IIT Bombay alone. You can look at the image. They sent me the selfie after they went there. And some of them, as they say, they wouldn't even have known about these exams or haven't considered these exams if not for the website. So I asked them, you can help the next year, uh, guys. You can just uh, share your experience about how you crack the exam, the tips and suggestions, so on. So they gladly agreed because they felt that this was a way for them to uh, pay back to the community. And uh, yeah, boy, did it help the next year. In the year of 2020, OK, there are two major physics exams, JAM and JUST. And in the exam of JAM, in the top 25, eight of them turned out to be engineers from citizens of science community. And the other exam, JUST, out of the top five, four of them were engineers from this community. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't mean to say that the ranks are a great achievement, but the point here is these exams are not designed for engineers. These were designed for BSc physics students. Engineers were just additionally allowed to sit, and these guys are racking a havoc over there. And OK, there was something else that has happened uh, in the same year. There was this guy, uh, Nakul Agarwal. Uh, he got already rank of 55 in another exam. Still, he didn't make it to the IITs. So why? Because he was an outsider. And not just him, there were a lot of other people who were relegated to uh, colleges of their uh, lower preference, despite getting their ranks. Uh, by the way, did I tell you this? In both these exams, one guy got all India first rank. Guess who that is? It was the guy from the hospital. This is him uh, getting graduated last year and wondering if there are any other exams that could top. And yeah. So, I mean, if you're wondering what happened of this guy, Nakul Agarwal, he didn't get into any of the IITs, but he got an admit into Alberta University, Canada. And whoosh, so much for complaining about brain drain, right? This is self inflicted. So we uh, seriously took up the case. We uh, explained our problems and we uh, gathered information, we gathered signatures, and we mailed to the IITs and a few other prominent people. IITs didn't reply, of course, because, well, they're IITs. What must we be thinking? But some prominent people replied. This gentleman you might all know, right? Dr. H. C. Vama. He was all praises for the vlog, and he was rooting for the initiative. And uh, yeah, we couldn't be more happy. And, uh, and this kept going, and on 1st September of 2020, uh, 
we got to know that there was someone else who we made sense to. And can you guess who that was? The IITs themselves. All the IITs have come together and they have relaxed, at least most of them have relaxed the eligibility criteria for all the engineers. So any engineer with a rank and basic eligibility, he can go to an IIT independent of these eligibilities. And, oh, next, the story doesn't end here. The next year, 2021, I got a lot of stories. There were uh, people from different backgrounds that came to me. There were some uh, MBBS graduates who approached me, and there was this guy, uh, Prince Vivek Baruha. He's got a double digit rank in JE. He did computer science from IIT Bombay. Then he did MBA from IIM Indoor. He decided he wanted to do physics. He could be earning in lakhs and crores. He quit that. He gave the exam. He got All India first rank. I'm not surprised at this point. But after that, now he's doing a PhD. He draws a stipend of 16,000 rupees. Same story for this other girl, Surbhi Chandra. Engineering, IAM, Goldman Sachs, quits physics. This guy, Varun Goenka, he owns a major coaching institute in Kolkata. Uh, he was 35. He had a family, kids, life was all set. Some midlife crisis, I guess. He decided he needs to do masters in physics. Gave the exam, cracked it, got into IIT Kharagpur, but he can't quit this business either. So what does he do? In the weekdays, he goes to IIT Kharagpur classes as a student, and in the weekends, he returns to Kolkata, joins the classes as a teacher. And it's not just engineers. As I've told, there were some MBBS graduates, and there were two, two of them they were from AIMS. Imagine that. And the earlier policy change we talked about, that was only for the IITs. But there were hundreds of other universities and thousands of other colleges, right? These guys weren't eligible for any of them. And looking at these people, I realized that earlier we were of the feeling that this, uh, this was a request that we were making, right? But, I mean, look at these people. These are top in their fields. They were doing extraordinarily. They could be earning very big money, but they quit all that. They, it's not that they were crazy. They know what they were doing. They were crazy good, and they were crazy passionate. This combination of incredibly talent, incredibly talented, and immensely passionate, this is a combination that makes them a gold mine of resource for any research institution, right? So I was wondering, uh, what could be the cause of this is because basically in an undergrad stream, whatever you choose, as a 17-year-old, you are not allowed to switch to any other stream and science much less so, right? So I tried to make my point across and I tried to look into the history of outsiders in science. I would Google up the names of random popular scientists I could think of and I would try to find the eligibility, sorry, uh, their academic uh, background. Turns out, a lot of them, a lot of them, I mean, I was not even ready for the numbers. You can look at that. J.J. Thompson has discovered electrons, and Abdul Salam has unified two fundamental forces of physics. They didn't study physics in undergraduate. They studied mathematics. And then Paul Dirac, he was an electrical engineer, and Boy, he was a history major. They were founding fathers of quantum mechanics. And you look at... Newton, Leibniz, and Fermat, they were founding fathers of calculus. Newton, Leibniz have studied philosophy in college, and Fermat studied law. Any list of greatest mathematicians of all time would certainly have Euler, Cauchy, and Riemann. All three of them studied theology in college. Theology, by the way, is study of God's religion and all of that. And Euler, in particular, is a very interesting guy. He's published over 800 research papers, and at a point of time, he went completely blind. And guess what? After he went blind, he started publishing more and more. He was publishing papers as if he was running a weekly. So, and he said, after going blind, he had less distractions to worry about. <laughs> and there are many more. Venki Ramkrishnan, 
He's done his PhD in physics, become a biologist, won a Nobel in chemistry. <laughs> Florence Nightingale, we know, right? She is founder of modern nursing. How many of you know that she was also a pioneer statistician? There's a particular graph that she's invented called the polar area chart. And I'm not even going to talk about Leonardo da Vinci and you. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. And uh, coming to India, of course, we have Ramanujan. I don't think I can talk more. And uh, in India, the greatest award for science and technology is regarded to be Bhatnagar Award. And as I look up, 10 of these awardees in mathematics, they were not from mathematics background, at least in their undergrad. And 10, same for uh, physics as well. And oddly enough, Dr. Swanti Swarup Bhatnagar, I mean, the award is named after him. He's known for his work in chemistry. Guess what? In his undergrad, he failed in chemistry, so he couldn't major in that. <laughs> and uh, this is the highlight of all. There was a guy in Europe. His father and uncle ran an engineering firm. So family was forcing him to take up engineering. And he said the following. He said it was unbearable to him. Can you guess who that is? OK. He's probably the first name that comes to your mind when I say the word scientist. OK. Uh, you can either call a person genius, or you can just call him the name of the person. <laughs> Okay, look what he did to physics. Does this remind you of something? <laughs> That's right. That's him. <laughs> okay. Uh, the thing with this outsiders is they literally come with an outsider perspective, right? This outsider perspective, it could be the difference between you being stuck in your project or having a breakthrough. Scientific breakthroughs can come from any corner, not just of the world map, but also of the academic map, or even from outside that, because Ramanism didn't have the kind of formal education that we have, or even Faraday, he hadn't had any formal education. And, okay, let's imagine this case. The oiler I talked about earlier, young oiler, time travels to India, he applies to masters in mathematics in some Jhetalal University, he provides his theology BSc certificate, bachelor's certificate. He'd be kicked off at the gates of the university, right? Imagine how many oilers have been stopped at the gates of mathematics. Do we even have the right to do that? How many breakthroughs have we missed? The, the new national educational policy and national digital university that is coming up, I'm sure they're going to make it easier to switch but, but the acceptance in academia and general public at large of these outsiders is, I'm, I don't know, I'm not unsure of it. What I'm sure of it though, those of you who stayed awake through my presentation, you will have more acceptance towards outsiders. So let's uh, celebrate and commemorate these outsiders in science and more importantly, at least for the next generation, no matter what degree they choose in their undergrad as a 17 year old, Let's keep their options open for science. And let's open the citizenship of science for anyone who seeks it. Cheers to science. Cheers to outsiders. This is Dushyant Iridasala. Till we meet again. <laughs>